Hello church. Do you ever just find yourself wanting to weep with the thought of how good the Lord Jesus is and how real he is, how close he is to us, that we get to walk with him, know him? These Psalms that we read today point us in that direction and make such close correlation with the words that Jesus said and the way that the New Testament would call us to living. It is not separate from what we read here in the Old Testament. There's a couple things we could talk about, but let me just show you some of them. In Psalm 106, I want to show the two, what I would describe as gap standards in verse 23 and then in verse 28 to 30. In verse 23, it talks about Moses and it says he stood in the breach. And I'll use the word a gap standard. He stood in the gap. And this is referring to two stories in which Moses did that. In Exodus chapter 32, it was in regards to the golden calf. And God was going to punish people far more severely had not Moses interfered with prayer on the people's behalf. And the Lord relented. Again, that happened in Numbers chapter 11, where God had already sent a fire on the outskirts of the camp. But then again, Moses prayed and on the people's behalf, he stood in the gap for them. He stood in the breach and the Lord relented. And then if you look in, in Psalm 106 at verse 30, uh, 30, it says Phineas stood up and intervened. And so he did a similar thing. He intervened on behalf of the people. It's referring to Numbers 25 when the, when the Israelites were prone to sin and Phineas took decisive action on the Lord's behalf. And because of it, a plague that had already started and killed quite a few people was stopped. Had Phineas not stood in the gap, more people would have been affected by that. That is what it means to be one who stands in the gap. In Ezekiel chapter 22, there's another time when that uh, term is used, when it says that God was looking for someone to stand in the gap, but didn't find anybody. Church, when are we those kind of people, like Moses or like Phineas, who are willing to stand in the gap for others? Are we willing to pray for others on their behalf? Are we willing to take decisive action on someone else's behalf? We ought to do that. We should not be the kind of people that think, while well, I'm saved, who cares about everybody else? That way of thinking does not line up with the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what he does for us? In Romans chapter 8, he does exactly the same thing we know about Moses and Phineas. In Romans chapter 8, he intercedes for us. He is praying on our behalf. He is standing in the gap for us. In 1 Timothy, it says that he actually is a mediator between God and man. He stands in the gap. The cross acts as a mediator between us and the Lord uh, and his Father, God the Father. And so he is the ultimate gap standard, if you will call him that. And we ought to, Philippians 2 would say that we need to have the exact same attitude that Jesus had. And so we could ask the Lord this question today, Jesus, who would you have me stand in the gap for? How can I pray for them? And what's a step of action I can take today? Then, that is so wonderful, I could just get lost there. In Psalm 111, verse 5, it says, God provides food for those who fear him. Well, hold on a second. In Acts chapter 17, it says that God provides, gives all men life and breath and everything else. But here it says, food for those who fear him. You know what he's getting at, church? He's getting at the kind of food that only somebody who follows and obeys the Lord and fears him will receive. It's a spiritual life, it's life giving to your spirit. It's life giving to your soul. That's the kind of food that you can only get if you obey the Lord. In John chapter four, when Jesus was at the well with the Samaritan woman in, uh, in Samaria, obviously, but he's at that well. The disciples, they knew that Jesus was tired. They had gone off to town to go get some food. But when they came back, they were surprised to find Jesus talking to, with the Samaritan woman and they offered him food to eat. And Jesus said, I have food that you know nothing about. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. He was talking about the life-giving, sustaining nature of obeying the word of the Lord. Obviously, that comes from obeying the Bible. But even if, what, if you think about what Jesus was doing in that moment, he had obeyed the specific instructions of the Lord. We sometimes call those rhema words. They line up with the Bible, but they led Jesus to a certain place in Samaria, to a certain well, to a certain woman at a certain time. That specific and following those instructions is very life-giving. A simple way to get there today would be to ask the Lord this question, Lord Jesus, what would you have me do today? And then do it with zeal, church. In Psalm 112, there's so much goodness here, I can just can't even contain it. But 
In verse 6, 7, and 8, it talks about this righteous man who has no fear of bad news because he trusts in the Lord and therefore his heart is secure. This reminds me of the words that Jesus said in Luke chapter 12. I think about those people among us, including myself sometimes, who is prone to think, what if this happens? What if that happens? And I sometimes can get lost there in worrying about something that is beyond my control and is actually not my business to worry about. And Jesus said in Luke chapter 12, he said, who of you by worrying can add one hour to your life? Obviously no one. Then he said, if you cannot do that simple thing, why do you worry about the rest? And then a little bit later, he even described those people who worry as, oh, you of little faith. Church, when we worry about things that are outside of our control and we are continually going into a place of what if this and what if that, it is actually a trust in God issue. Church, why don't we talk to the Lord about that today and do what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and take every thought captive, make it obedient to Christ. And you could even pray a prayer like this and say, Jesus, about the thing that I'm most tempted to worry about, what is one step of action I can take? And help me to leave the rest in your hands. And enjoy your day with Jesus as you part on one of those wonderful things today.